Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to check out the pages of the National Dailies. We have G.D. Johnson joining the conversation. Good morning, G.D. Johnson, and thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, Messi, and good morning, Azar. Happy New Year to you, and good happy morning. New Year to our viewers all over the world. Morning, G.D. Johnson. All right. Uh, pleasure to Let's uh, start off with the leadership newspaper this morning, and uh, we'll be checking out the top stories on the leadership newspaper. The banner caption says, Drawing the boundaries, Defense Headquarters warns politicians against using of military uniforms for campaigns. That's what you find on uh, the board caption. Now, we have several riders. Let's see if we can take you through all of them. Says, Troops killed 1,910 terrorists in 2021 u.s embassy confirms approval for use of super, super tucano jets in northeast and bandit release 28 adopted villages in niger joining apc offers no immunity from corruption trial that's what uh, the president is quoted to say dantata advocates Return to parliamentary system of government. You also find why we want Osiba Jaw for president. That's what the group is quoted to say. And uh, protests oppose reopening of Doan College. Gunmen bomb Imo police station and free detainees. So you, you constantly have this issue of a prison break just dominating uh, the entire polity. Uh, that's much we can take on the leadership newspaper this morning. To the Nigerian Tribune this morning, big story, or Tom to Buhari, declare Mieti Allah as a terrorist organization. Okay. Rejection of state police. You are working against interests and will of Nigerians. MBF tells Buhari. Buhari's excuse for opposing state police holds no water, says Adibanjo. And also Nigerians will reject Buhari's preferred candidate. And that's from the PDP. Also on the Tribune. Sylvester Oromoni, coroner to commence inquest into cause of death on the 15th of January. Ijo youths protest, vow to disrupt academic activities if school reopens. And uh, we can also find here 2023 presidency, Fayemi alleges plot within the APC to smear his reputation. National Assembly workers begin strike on Monday over unpaid eight months minimum wage. And federal government explains 6.39 trillion naira deficit in 2022 budget. Age is telling on me says president muhammad buhari gunmen attack police division free detainees in imo and also troops intercept illicit drugs worth 6.5 million naira in kaduna kill suspect a 300 level uni just student murdered inside hostel uh inside host uh, hotel room i beg your pardon body mutilated eyes missing those are the big stories that we can share on the tribune all right, let's move away from the Nigerian Tribune and check out the Punch newspaper this morning. Super Tucano deployment. NAF plans bandit bombardment, allays fears over civilian casualties. U.S. warns federal government. That's a bold caption you find there. Military to target forests, bandit camps, not civilian areas. Usage must conform with international norms. The United States tells federal government. Uh, that's it on that particular um, issue. Away from that now, you also have federal government spent 1.68 billion naira. Uh, I beg your pardon, 1.68 billion dollars on food importation in nine months. This is according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. PDP will take over if APC leaders fail on convention. That's what the president is quoted to say. Federal government will merge agencies won't sack workers says finance minister and away from that now you also find lagos community decries cemetery invasion by suspected ritualists and robbers panic as headsmen lead over 1000 cows to shogbo under darkness a motaku contends headers still uh, you still have interesting headlines let's see if we can take one or two uh, just before we move away now and another header says, Lagos community decries, okay, I took that already. APC stakeholders demand progressive governors DG's sacking, threatens protest. 
and uh, responses to my presidential beat overwhelming and encouraging. I am is quoted on that. Uh, that's the much that we can take this morning. Uh, but I also find this other one. Bloodbath in Zamfara communities as bandits killed 200 and scores missing. 200? 200. And this is at the point where we're talking about, uh, uh, of course, 200. Is it 200,000? All right. On the Daily Independent, just shocking. Opposition can take over in 2023. Buhari wants APC. Asks the party to put house in order. Says uh, old age telling on him. Corrupt persons won't go scot-free by joining APC. And convention first crisis in APC as stakeholders threaten nationwide protest. Uh, five indigenous companies uh, jostle for three billion dollars shells onshore oil fields. Autumn asks Buhari to declare Mati Al as terrorist. In 2023, Southeast PDP leaders endorse Aim's presidential bid. We can also find here 2023 presidency entrenched interest in APC plotting to pull me down, says Fire Me. And uh, Buhari pledges intervention in Mali crisis. Because of time, we're going to quickly just. Uh, bring in Judy Johnson to get his thoughts in on these stories. Uh, Judy Johnson, good morning once again. Well, good morning. Uh, once again, I'm in here to have you as all of the world. So all right. We'll be well, I, 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 I want to see if we can take as many of them, because there's so many of them that, that sound really, really um, interesting. So I, I want us to, if we can, do every story in two minutes max. Uh, let's start with the, you know, protest uh, by um, Ijo Youths, you know, that, uh, you know, if the school, the Doan College reopens, that there will be a protest. And, of course, the coroner to commence in quest into the cause of his death on the 15th of January. Well, one of the challenges we have is that um, sometimes we we, re we report issues from the mental point of view without waiting for the necessary agents of government to the need for um, a lot of commentators, a lot of public affairs analysts have come to a conclusion with respect to what happened in the one college. And sometimes we must respect the institutions of, of, of state and we cannot afford to take the laws into hands to think that, okay, if things do not go my way, I don't have to, um, all the time, we don't have always to believe in the conspiracy theory and the rest of it. And I think the media has a lot to play in this. We should allow state agencies to do their job. If everybody keeps taking laws into their own hand, when 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 reports or, or, or reports comes out and it does not go in the direction with which they think it should go, then we we'll have chaos in this site. Is that maybe because of a trust of deficit, you know, uh, between the people and government, government agencies, MTAs and the likes? Uh, it has even taken an ethnic coloration. Can I see the ethnic threatening to uh, the, this, anything that affects every Nigerian. We are all Nigerians, regardless of whichever area of Nigeria that we come from. And that's why we have advocated that we should take away the issue of citizen and ethnicity and state of origin out of our national identity as far as i'm concerned let's wait for all state institutions to come to their conclusion and once they come to the conclusion whatever the outcome we should all accept but there is one thing we must also understand that there's an ultimate judge that sees better than what we can see we can't afford to bring another chaos as a result of um the outcome of a report an interim report that we have received and we come to conclusion you can ask an independent panel to look into it if you are not satisfied with the process. And there are, there are means and measures which you could explore through the legal means to, to seek redress if you are not satisfied with the process. I don't think taking laws into one's hand will solve the problem. All right, G.D. Johnson, let's share your thoughts on the, the super Tucano deployment where the NFF will just be uh, embarking on that mission to bombard bandits and uh, the fact that yes the united states is saying that it has to you know work it has to be uh, uh, done in line with international best practice and uh, they're also assuring that there will be no civilian casualties so must they must they come out in the public domain and and say that we are starting to we, the nigerian air force is starting the bombardment of bandits they are fighting guerrilla warfare and then so that the bandits will leave the forest and they will not be able to, to pin them down to where they are. There are basic protocol that guides the deployment of 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 of, of fighter jets where you have um where you have civilians and if you once you follow that protocol and you reduce the level of civilian casualty, then you are in order. But I 
I am thinking about that. We want to strike that engage in guerrilla warfare, not state actors that do not have fixed location, and then you go on here and announce that we are going to start. So what you are telling them, you are warning them ahead of time that they should leave. I, I wonder the way we run our our security um, architecture in this in this particular part of the world. I, I, I was thinking about when I read the story, I, I was just laughing that these people, wonderful, it's, 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 it's wonderful. You see, when you make use of ear strike, ear strike is to give a surprise attack on the enemy. You pin down the enemy, you strike them. There's a particular thing that you strike the iron when it's off. You know what the approach they are taking? Now, they are they, 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 they given the bandits head start to move away from whatever location they found themselves. So as far as I'm concerned, it's it's I was irritated by by, by Nigerian force coming into the public domain and telling us their intention. When this should be done through surveillance and this should be done with heavy intelligence, intelligence gathering and then a surprise attack. Well, but, maybe, but there's no the, specific day to you know yeah, when that's gonna happen. Uh, bandits don't read the punch uh, newspapers. <clears throat> Uh, uh, exactly, so but it's only probably. Yeah. Well, but, but you know, I, I mean, uh, that, that might just that be on a lighter that. note. But I'm just saying that uh, I understand where you're coming from. But I mean, no specific date, however, maybe it might happen. You know, 2023 or thereabout, few months, two weeks. Have you ever seen? We we all witnessed the lack of. We all witnessed the American assault on ISIS. We all witnessed how under Trump, um, Suleimani and, and, and an Iranian general was, to, was announced. We all we all saw when December 2020, when Americans sent their agents to come and rescue um, special agent in Morocco from Morocco to fly to Northern Nigeria. Northern Nigeria, they still say, give me a break, give me a break. These people are. Just, I don't know. I don't. I, 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 I don't know whether um, they are fighting with the killing of um, the Al Qaeda leader back then. Um. Baghdadi, Baghdadi, Baghdadi in Syria, in Syria, Iraq, order. So no. we give us a break. They should give us a break. This, All right. these bandits are, 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 are fighting guerrilla warfare. Yeah, they are fighting guerrilla warfare. They do not have fixed location. So you pin them down, you strike them, All you right. demobilize them, and then you allow the ground forces to to, to to to. It's a coordinated attempt. You don't announce this on the on the on the, on the, on the pages. All I right. saw a particular story answer. whereby the, 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 the I saw something online whereby the Nigerian army released the footage of some of to journalists footage of some of the equipment which they have. Which they have resuscitated and which they are going to use to fight. You don't fight war like that. You don't fight war. If you want journalists to have access to what you want to do, what you do is that you have some of them embedded in your team. And I shall carry out your onslaught. After you are through with your onslaught, they receive they release the footage, the footage of what you have done. Not before you go and attack them and then you, you send, okay, these are the um the equipment that the army has resuscitated, these are what they are going to use to fight bandits. Oh, give me a break. You don't fight a war like that. J.D. Johnson. Um, well, once again, I, uh, let's hope that the uh, uh, bandits don't read the punch newspapers. Uh, let's move to the Tribune. Otto exactly. Mulari declare Meiti Allah as terrorist organization. Uh, of course, I'm, com I'm sure this is coming on the heels of, uh, you know, the bandits being declared a terror um, uh, terrorist, and of course uh, his statements on uh, re, uh, state police. Um, Adeban just says Buhari's excuse for opposing state police uh, ha holds no water. But let's let's start with you know uh, the governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, asking that uh, Mietiala be declared a terrorist organization. Well, uh, you discover that um, there has been a dis escalation in terms of farmers and that clash. Towards the last, towards the last six, seven, eight months of last year, what the crisis we used to have, towards the clashes, we don't seem to have that. And I think that issue has been has been addressed to a certain extent. That does not foreclose that we still have some skirmishes here and there. However, if you look at the state of things now and what it used to be, 
I, I, I want to disagree with I want to disagree with the governor of the governor of Benue State. If we had wanted to do that, if we talk about this in 2020, 2019, I would agree with him because we we, we had incessant farmers' elders clashes and we had it all over across the country. But what we have been dealing with the last one year in the last 18 months has been bad and of the farmers said as clashes. We have been dealing with banditry, kidnapping and the rest of it. So I decided with the governor with the governor of um, the governor of Benin State calling for um declaration of Niyeti Allah as, as as terrorists based on current situation, not using the past. Now um coming to what Pa Ayadiban just said concerning why why are you not being sincere with state policing? You see so every time we Every time we reduce the governance and public policy to one individual, we fall short of what is called reductionism. Now, Bari is just the president. Bari is not the federal assembly members. We have senators, we have governors. All right, we seem to uh, be losing your uh, feet from uh, Judy Johnson there. Um, I mean, but, you know, it's, it's mostly in reaction to. And it's not the only one who is going to be speaking about this, Ayodhi Banjo. Um, and a couple of other people have, you know, reacted to the president's statements with regards to uh, state police. You know, some of them have also pointed out, um, you know, the fact that he didn't actually even answer the question on state police. You know, he went straight to talking about traditional rulers and some of all of that. But he also um, likened that mm. to, you know, the relationship, you know, between the local government and the state governor saying that if... Uh, that's the situation, then, uh, you know, he, he, he kind of thinks, I mean, with that illustration, uh, I think he's of the school of thoughts that, you know, state governors would definitely be controlling the state police architecture for their, you know, own benefits. Well, like um, our guest yesterday said, that's fear mongering. These things don't necessarily have to play out that way. Um, and what's wrong with the st state governor being the chief security officer of his state? Hey, I, in think, practice, I, think, I think people really are projecting what they are. Because if a state governor is chief security officer of a state, he should be in control of the police. What exactly uh, are the fears that he used to bully people? Exactly. Hello. I mean, these things are happening already. So what's new about a state governor, you know, who decides to bully people? There's, there's also another things? argument, you know, to all of that. Now, now some persons are saying that, uh, you know, how states are still grappling to pay salaries and all of that in terms of revenue generation. It might also be a problem uh, when you have um, states controlling their own security architecture. And so you, you have the state policing. Would they have the capacity? Would they have enough to generate? Because at the end of the day, you now begin to say funding would now be exclusive to the state governors. And so they have to pay the police. Would they have what it takes Maybe to... These are still, um, for me, so, these still sound, sound like excuses, excuses, excuses. If definitely. We're, if we're serious. If we're serious about having to restructure on certain levels with regards um, where Nigeria is going to and, you know, and putting Nigeria in, in, with a structure that actually works, um, there's people who have even mentioned that there are certain states that should not even exist. Um, because they are not, you know, viable. They can't feed themselves. They can't fund themselves. And so creating those states in the first place was a problem. But maybe it would then put, make people sit up and make them realize that you cannot just be state governor, you know, to sit down in that seat for eight years. You need to actually figure out ways that you can develop your state's economy and develop internal general revenue for your state and feed your state and fund your state. You need to, you need to think. And, and it's the reason we have these 70-year-olds running for office, you know, to be state governor and doing absolutely nothing in eight years. When I say nothing, I mean absolutely nothing for eight years. Those things will maybe stop. Um, the argument against state police cannot simply be, oh, governors will have control of them, they'll use them to bully, bully but, people. But, but no. that's the argument. I, but it makes absolutely no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Because if a governor wants to bully anybody, he can still do it currently. And not, there's nothing really holding the governor back from doing whatever he chooses to do with the security architecture that is at his, at his disposal currently. So that's not even an argument. Once again, the guest yesterday, I think, um, um, Ezekiel Yairtok said, it is simply just fear-mongering. And that is not in any way for Nigeria trying to move forward a reasonable excuse that a person should give as why you cannot have state police. Because currently, the federal is doing the same thing. So, so I'm, I'm saying that uh, maybe we need to come to a point where we need to understand that whether or not you have the federal police, I mean, you have the state police, there would always be, you know, advantage and disadvantage of everything that we do. And so if we have this, if we think about this particular, you know, um, 
pattern, then it would also propel us to taking the action. Like he, I mean, I would definitely want to agree with, uh, you know, Ezekiel and Yai talk with the fact that it's just fear. And so what if that doesn't happen? Because there's a lot that we can actually achieve. And if we eventually, you know, tilt towards having state police, it would definitely mean that there will also be need for us to begin to have states controlling their resources. Um, so you are able, you know, to begin to pay salaries. And then we're talking about federalism in its true sense. And usually I would say that no pattern of government is better than any other. It just, you know, you're looking what works at... For you. uh, yes, it's what works for you and who are the players, who are the persons calling the shots at this point in time. So that's what we're about. I'm hoping that in 2022 or maybe 2023, because I mean, we're just waiting that we have a transition of government from, you know, the current um, leaders, uh, the president, the governors, um, amongst others. Then we just have a transition to, uh, you know, different set of persons who will make things differently. But we have G.D. Johnson back on the line. And just before, you know, we call it a wrap on this segment, I'd like that you share your thoughts on the leadership as well. There's this one that says that um, gunmen bomb emo police station three detainees so there seem to be a pattern of bombing of police stations and you know jailbreak or prison break if you like uh, to call it uh, what are your thoughts on this not not only that if you look at the story in the there's another story on your back in Zafara. yeah on the Bombing conscious one it says 200 people has caught missing now, relate that with what is happening in Kino and Zafar. In the state of emergency, we declare in those states, in those two states. It's, 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 it's unbelievable that if you see the pattern of the insecurity that has pervaded in the state, and as they are moving forward, the richer issue, effort in instituting the democratic governance, that is the will of the people. And not the will of the court in, 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 in moving forward. Because if it's not as characterized in this case, it's, it's pathetic, it's, unbe it's, 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 it's unbelievable. And you begin to wonder what is happening with artificiality architecture. How can someone in that state working for herself, the chief security officer? How can someone in that state working for herself, the director of DSS? How can someone in that state working for herself be committing a police? And how can someone calling for herself the DID in charge of that zone that Kimo State is in? There is a total breakdown of law of, and we see a partner whereby security police stations are being bombed. Yes, uh, Jude Johnson, I, I also want to, we probably should wrap up with this, and that is. The story on the Tribune this morning, and I think it made um, the Daily Independent also, it says, age telling on me, and that's from the president. It says, working eight hours a day in the office is no joke. I don't expect Nigerians to appreciate me after office, uh, he adds, and a couple of other things. Judy Johnson. Well, um, the president himself said in 2015 that it will not be more than one time. However, he went ahead to do second time. So it's evidently clear from all indications that he is telling on the president that I, I, I appreciate his sincerity and I appreciate his trustworthiness and his information with Nigerians. And not for me moving forward, if you take that as a consideration in who we are going to elect, as president in 2023, and we have seen people started parading themselves. We have seen that, and as I know himself, how do you feel that endorse my presidential view? It seems a good thing that we have to support the people. So moving forward in this region, we must consider the state of health, the age, and the physical and the mental ability of the who is going to be the president of this. Federal Republic. So I think the president has given us an indication to be a partner that will guide our decision moving moving forward in 2022. Okay. Uh, Judy Johnson, I, I think Mercy wants to. Uh... Well, I, I, for the want of time, we'll probably just have to, you know, move away from this. Yeah, more interesting headlines here, but we look forward to having this conversation with you on Friday next week. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank uh, you.
Have a great weekend. Thank you once again, Judy Johnson. Uh, short break, we'll next uh, be sharing with you what happened on this day in history many, many years ago. And then right after that, our first major conversation kicks off here on The Breakfast. We're talking about the naming of uh, bandits as terrorists and what the significance of that really is. Stay with us. We'll be back.